you have to look for basic levels of security. Um, and I'll give you an example. You also need to make sure that the security that you're looking for belongs to the people that you're looking at. I know this sounds insane, but I was doing a test. Um, I'm working with a group of accountants who outsource bookkeeping to India. It's quite a commonplace thing, by the way, for your financial details to disappear off to a new data these days, even though you may not know. Though I'm working on them, you may not know that because that's not right. So I put out a call on LinkedIn to uh, Indian bookkeepers. And I went through the app, was quite thinking I might have one myself, given the rates they charge. And I went through an interview process, short business process. And I said to them, like, can I see your data privacy rules, your standard security process? I'm not talking about the in-depth secret ones that really keep it, you know, and how you handle data. Because I don't want my client's data visible to you and your team until I know it's safe. This is a process called due diligence. So I get back this uh, client sort of NDA agreement and I get back a data privacy agreement and some semblance of a security thingy-ish. All with three different organisations' names on. I don't mean three different potential clients, but they've just gone to someone else's website, cut and paste that stuff, and sent it to me. From this, I worked out they'd never heard of data privacy and data security and there wasn't a hope in hell's chance that they would ever see my books which include my supplier's bank details because I pay them online through what's in that record. So it's it's not just about gizmos and mismos or even saying to people, well, you're secure. Now, obviously, when you're dealing with Microsoft, when you're dealing with Google, with Facebook, with um, Salesforce, some of the big kind of players, you can't say to them, I insist you turn X on. Right. You can have a policy of saying we don't use obscure platforms, which unless we really need to, you know, which makes sense. We we're too tiny to audit the data processes of everybody in, on the planet. But you also have to have some sense about what data you put there, and you have. To, I would always be choosing platforms with multi-user options and multi-factor or two-factor authentication. And one of the biggest hazards we see to data privacy in the marketing world is the client has picked some system that doesn't have that. They turn off multi-factor authentication to allow login sharing. And then someone that the login has not even been shared with hacks in. And now we don't know who's banned and who's not blocked, but we know we've got a problem. So clients have to bear some responsibility. But because lots of people who run businesses may be hiring digital marketers for the first time, I think there is a slight moral burden on digital marketers to recommend platforms that, are, that meet that test. If the client is saying to you, what do I do? And not to, um, it's the biggest problem here is in social media posting. Um, Facebook, obviously, you can have your own business manager logons, whatever, but a lot of things, um, log, you can't have a multi-user login on LinkedIn, for example. So you can have a, log, a LinkedIn business page, can't you? But it doesn't have its own login independent of yours. So a lot of social media is behind the curve. Now, I, there are a couple of, of platforms that allow you to control at a user level, not just who accesses at all. But the second layer of what they access. So I use Content Cal, which does that because a lot of our customers tell us very confidential stuff through personal message and direct message. And I don't let the people who post for me see those DMs and PMs because they're not technically competent to handle them. They don't need to see them. Um, but a lot of social media platforms don't let you separate personal messages from uh, posting and depending who you're marketing for and what your client is doing if you've got a health coach or a family breakdown coach or a coach who's and coaches are big for for digital marketers you know if you've got someone who's doing relationship issues you'd be amazed what people would dm a total stranger and they would assume and why not because you haven't told them differently have you that that DM is going straight to Auntie Laura, who's going to save their marriage. Which is why not only do you need to have data privacy policies at the client end, but little pop-ups that go, this messenger is monitored by team. 
auntie flo may not be the only person who sees your stuff 